Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about tire pressure and tire gauges and what my feelings are on the subject. And I come from a off-road background, um, rock crawling and stuff like that. Back when I was younger, I used to do a lot of that. So there's a lot of playing with tire pressure. So let me turn this thing around so that you can see what's going on. All right, so I've got several gauges out here just for an example. So these here I got from Cycle Gear. They sell motorcycle uh, accessories and stuff like that. So this one here goes up to, I believe, 60 PSI. And then this one here is good for when you get into the lower tire pressures. It only goes to 15 but if you put a high pressure on this, you can spring the gauge and then it wouldn't be accurate anymore. Then I have this digital one here from, uh, that I got from Freedom Ropes. Turn that on and then you just put that on the uh, valve stem. Gives you a reading. I believe this will do any readings. I actually have not tested this against this for accuracy but there's that option there's standard pressure gauges that everyone's used to seeing these here they have these in low tire pressure also so uh you know like say you want this to have exactly 10 pounds or five pounds or something in the lower range those other gauges don't work real well down at the lower tire pressures tires like these they don't run super high pressure you'd want them to run lower those which you believe the paddles i have for that machine right there uh actually only have one and a half pounds of pressure in them so there's lots of different options on how to do things just like on your vehicle you know on my tow rig over there that I tow the camper with <clears throat> when I'm when I have a camper on there or when I'm hauling the side by side on top of that and I'm towing the trailer then I have the tires pumped up I personally go five pounds under what the tire says max pressure is but the rest of the time like right now the truck is empty those tires would be around 30 35 pounds that's what I run around in my area. I'm in a rural area. Uh, if I was hitting the highway and going to do a long road trip, you pump them up some. This tire right here is up around 20. Well, I played with it a little, so it'll be a little low at the moment. But they're up higher because the last thing I used this for was I did a parade. So I pumped them up. The vehicle sits taller. It has less rolling resistance. You're on a paved road. It's fine. The suspension, it's still nice and plush. But when you get out there and you're on rough terrain, rocky roads, um, pitted, uh, not pitted, potholes, or you got boulders, usually when I'm off-road with this thing, I have 10 pounds of pressure in it. Now, that's my what i run i'm not saying that's what you should do <laughs> and on here on this gauge where is it at general xp4 tire pressure see this here get in there where you can read it if i can stay still for the xp4 says i should have 16 in the front 22 in the back now if you're running a bunch of weight <clears throat> like say you have a bunch of cargo on there a bunch of passengers by all means you want those tires pumped up more i usually do not have a lot of weight on that unless i'm working around the property here um so when i'm out in the woods i run the tire pressure lower it makes my ride a little smoother on the rocks it's less likely to get a flat because the tire gives over the rocks um Oh, I didn't mention this one. So this is another tire gauge that I got from Freedom Ropes. This is actually a deflator. So let's see if I can do this. 
and show you what's going on. Can I get farther out on this thing? Oop, wrong way. There, maybe like that. So, this is kind of a trick setup. You take this here, and you screw that onto the valve stem. So when you're out, like, with your trucks, usually these don't take a long time to air down. So I got that screwed in all the way. Then I take this one, and I turn it, and I grab the valve stem. And I unscrew that. And then it'll get to a point where I feel it kind of going click, click. That's the thread skipping. That means I got the valve stem all the way out. Now, you see the thing's not on. But then I grab this and I pull this out. That'll sense pressure and it'll start giving me readings. So now I'm letting air out of the tire. Oh, of course, when I say that, it's not doing it. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it on myself. All right, it says I got 16.6. 16.7. So then, make sure this is out all the way. It is, and that's in all the way. And then I pull that. Once you pull that out, it starts letting air out of the tire. And that's a way to deflate the tire rapidly. I also, in my truck, I always carry a valve stem remover. And there's also one for air and down that has a hole in the side. You just screw it onto the valve stem. With the hole on the side, it lets air out if you want to do it slowly. If you got a long ways to go, you pull the valve stem. But make sure you hold on to the thing. thing shoots across and you're going to be stranded. <laughs> so, anyway... Uh, that's something I use on that. Um, so that's just a neat little setup. There's a lot. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't put the valve stem back in. You got to always be thinking. So there's lots of companies that make different items for airing your tires down. This is just one of them that I have. And then, like I say, I got the other one in the in the truck that I always carry in there. Uh, so you can get one of these at freedomropes.com. You can get one of these gauges at freedomropes.com. These are from Cycle Gear. I don't know where I got this one. Oh, look, it's a slime. And then you want to have a pump with you. So this is a little air hawk. This is what I keep at home. It's like a, uh, kind of like a cordless drill. So I'll usually have that at camp or at home. Always take that with me. But I also have a pump in the bag down there in the middle. So there's always a pump on this vehicle. Anyways, I was just going to touch base on that kind of stuff. Let you know what I use. Like I say, I run the tire pressure lower on my machine. When I'm running paddles, like this machine here has the paddles on it. Um, if you want more traction and you get a better bite in the sand, do a lot better. You air those down a little bit. On my machine with these paddles, since I'm still... I got something I'm still trying to figure out how to get my belts to last longer when I'm in the dunes since I have such a heavy rig. Anyways, I run the tire pressure on my paddle a little higher than I do on any other vehicle just because I, I don't want it to bite into the sand as much because it puts too much load on my belt. But that's mainly a situation that I have that I'm still working on this machine here this is uh something like 160 horsepower or something like that i could air those tires down you know so they only have four or five pounds in them and this thing's going to do fine um it's a lighter vehicle it has more power uh the turbos have a bigger clutch 
So there's lots of reasons that would work fine. That'll give you more acceleration. Like I said, the paddles I run on that, they have hardly any tire pressure in them. And on my recons, they have very low tire pressure also. Anyway, I see we have been talking for about 10 minutes. Uh, if you got any questions on the subject, go ahead and comment. And uh, just something I thought I'd throw out there. Help a few people out if you don't know about the difference with running different tire pressure. That's a good, uh, a good idea of what I do. And of course, you got to use your judgment and you should always go off of the manufacturer's recommendation for safety. And it all depends on terrain. If you're rock crawling and you're crawling up some big rocks, you're going to want that tire a little bit lower on the tire pressure. Like you can see this one. Maybe you can see. It's got a little, little bit of a bulge to it. Because that tire currently probably only has about five pounds. And it just makes it, see if it'll show. Yeah, you can't see. It's still pretty hard. But it, it'll just flex over all the rocks. And different wheels hold the tires different too. Some wheel and tire combos, you lower them too much and that tire comes right off. Then you're sitting there stranded. Most of the time when you're going to run a low tire pressure, you want to have a bead lock. That's why you see a lot of sand toys with bead locks. Because in the sand, you're usually running a low tire pressure. Here's the front one with the bead lock. And then when you're side hilling, you got all that load pushing. The, the machine is pushing this way. The tire's trying to hold on down here. So it's just trying to rip that, that bead off of there and leave you stranded. That's why you usually see bead locks. Anyway, lots to consider. Like I said, you got any questions, go ahead and comment. And I'll try to answer it if I can. That is probably it for this video. I hope it's helpful to someone. All right, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It really helps the channel. And we will catch you on the next one. Have a good day. See ya.